Hi, welcome to the 24th webinar in 12D's training webinar series. My name is Lisa Stewart and I'm the Marketing and Communications Coordinator at 12D Solutions. 12D's training webinars showcase common industry challenges, taking a close look at industry best practices and how these can be implemented using 12D model software. The aim of these webinars is to upskill 12D model users and broaden their understanding of the capabilities of 12D model. We run these webinars regularly and record them for posting through our website and on YouTube. The first 23 webinars from this training series, as well as the first 24 webinars from our Industry Solutions series, are available on our YouTube channels if you missed those. During this live presentation, you'll be able to type your questions along the way. We'll put some instructions on the screen. We'll answer as many of those as possible throughout the webinar. At the end, I'll also read out some of your questions to the presenter for his insights if there's... Today's webinar on components will be presented by Peter Tainton, who has over 20 years of experience in various facets of road design. He's been engaged in large projects for several major councils and government road authorities. Over the last 15 or so years, he has worked closely with our programmers here at 12D in the implementation of a variety of design features within 12D model. This webinar will focus on the components within 12D model. Components are used to place a variety of features that involve a number of super alignments ranging from 1 to over 20. They include high entry urban intersections, roundabouts, rural intersection treatments, cul-de-sac and hammerhead road end types, bus bays with or without concrete inverts, as some of the component geometry is quite complicated, there'll also be a discussion on the do's and don'ts of placement and editing of the final geometry. Over to you, Peter. Thank you very much, Lisa. Um, so in our uh, webinar, as Lisa mentioned, we're going to look at components in a reasonable detail for the time allowed. Uh, as the components were developed, to limit the amount of drafting required for the super alignments, for such complicated things as roundabouts, high entry channelized intersections, freeway entry and exit ramps, etc. The components are available in the library and can be edited and saved off under a different name. In order to achieve a solution uh, for these uh, super alignments, the geometry type used by the alignments is element method, not IP. Computators are also used so that each alignment can automatically update when a change is implemented. If you have not used Element or Computators before, there's no need to worry as today's webinar is all about functionality, uh, where we edit the components, not the individual alignments. You can catch, catch up on the Element method by viewing a previous webinar called uh, Super Alignment Element Method, uh, available on the 12D website. We'll first look at our uh, library. So um, this is available. Uh, and again, there's uh, quite a few components uh, set there as a choice for you. Um, under settings, there's some information about um, the uh, utilising the source marks and mask in relation to your alignment name, whether you're going to do left side or right side uh, driving. The help on this is um, uh, quite good. Um, so if you go to the help, uh, there's a whole lot of information on the, on the component, uh, explanations on the, on the buttons. And uh, we can scroll down here and look at our settings node. And the settings node gives you information about the source string, um, what it's doing and what part of the reference alignment you can access. Um, and also drops down to um, uh, other types of options for you. So even the actual uh, string naming. And you'll notice if we go through some of the library ones, I'll have these uh, substitution values like dollar source, source, dollar destination name and so forth, dollar count. Um, so uh, if you don't quite know what they are, uh, go to your help menu and it'll give you an explanation of what they're all about. So the, um, uh, here we've just, uh, these are the names, standard names inside our components uh, that we're going to use and we're just setting a uh, alignment style to them so they look a bit better on the screen. Um, here I've actually uh, used the options up here to create a folder and copy and paste another component into a different folder and I've done some editing on this test one. Um, so if we have a look at the, the components quickly that are available in the library, uh, there's a uh, major roundabout. And uh, so basically it would be a, um, a dual lane approach and departure and quite a large radius set in the middle. 
um, mainly for maybe a high, uh, a large freeway overpass type uh, uh, roundabout, definitely not a, a subdivision one. Um, so under the uh, major intersection, again, it's a uh, fairly major one. It's got uh, dual carriageways each side, uh, left-hand turn lanes, high entry, right turn medians, and so forth. Uh, there's a, a CHR intersection, um, and this one actually has uh, some defaults that you can set in relation to the speed approach. Uh, there's a left-hand turn, a minor roundabout. Um, so, so the next one down, maybe not a tiny subdivision, but something uh, along maybe one of the council type roads. Um, and it has a larger radius in the middle and uh, some different types of uh, curb returns here that suit that radius. Minor intersection. So it's just like the major one, but all the things have been turned off. Um, so you don't have the high entry, you don't have the deceleration lanes, you just have simply fillets. Um, so that could be handy for a, a small subdivision uh, cul-de-sac, pretty straightforward. Um, a major and minor road. So this one here is just to give you a bit of a help. Uh, it's a fairly major one, but not always at a major intersection. These might be minor roads. So they may have no uh, centre median and just a white line marking and uh, so forth. So that's just a little bit of a start up for you. Uh, right turn. There's also some lanes uh, available for exit ramps, uh, two lanes, single entry ramps as well. Uh, bus bay. This one has concrete invert in it, so it's expecting you to have a cross fall across to the invert and back up again. So you can use those strings in your modifiers in your MTF file. Uh, no invert, just do a width to string modifier and extend the cross fall across. A larger one is a hammerhead. So if you have a uh, one instead of a cul de sac, you can uh, adjust those. Uh, it's also a major intersection short. Um, so basically what that means, it's uh, um, instead of having the larger one with all the deceleration lanes, everything, it does have at least the uh, high entry uh, uh, entry and exits. Um, so uh, you can edit, and as we go through this process, you'll understand how to edit them. But you will be able to edit this if you place it and add the left-hand turn lane on and so forth. There's a small roundabout, as you can see. Um, so it's quite a small race, R8. Uh, for the subdivisions and it's got some just simple fillets around the outside here. So it's quite easy and robust to place on most alignment strings. So I go back to the um, uh, major intersection. Let's have a quick look at the uh, edit option. And there's a preview here. So this one um, uh, this is where you can go and edit and copy and uh, change things yourself. Uh, it will show you there's a, what it looks like with a T-junction compared to a um, crossroad that only suits certain intersections, obviously. So in there, we've got the, um, the uh, name set up here. So we've got this uh, dollar source. You can, as I said, refer to the, uh, your help menu and what that substitution value means. It's just the name of the string, actually. So we've got a number of lanes here. So we can input number of lanes and change that. And we've got these all uh, what we refer to as spinners, which allow you to do this. Lane widths, uh, median lengths, and so forth. Um, there's a uh, automatic and a manual uh, process so you can have varying lane widths if you use the manual one, or you just have automatic that just does one uh, same lane width for, for all the lanes. Again, for the um, left hand turn, you've got these the count names so the curb returns around the outside here will all be MKO and they'll be 01, 2, 3, 4, and so forth. So that's what that counting idea is. So we've got a name for the islands and so forth. So that's what our, our um, uh, library entails, and that's the uh, little bit of a breakdown on what the library is all about. So if we um, uh, have a look at our, our geometry, um, so in most times your um, uh, alignment uh, for a major intersection, for instance, would have a long approach curve uh, or an approach a deceleration lane. It'd also have a clearance at the intersection, a taper. So it's actually quite a length before it gets to the intersection. And this could be you know, over 100 metres. So the components, most of the components will default this distance uh, from the intersection here to 150 metres, so at least you get something to start with. Um, so throughout this webinar, I'll be using construction super strings to start with. That's what these lines here are. They're just super strings, they're not, they're not uh, super alignments. And basically just drawn out the top of my mock um, survey here um, to allow, and this is a, a 150 metres that way, 150 metres that way, just to give you a bit of an idea that, hey, look, when I place this campaign, I'm going to get an answer. Um, so the majority of the times you'll have a problem is when your alignment string is too short. 
to take into account a long deceleration lane, for instance. You will get a warning in the output window if that does happen. Um, so this is all in an attempt to get a successful placement of your component, not relying on necessarily some of the constricted alignments, super alignments that you may create. So for roundabout, for instance, uh, here I've just created some uh, drawn some strings over the top, draped them on top of the uh, survey, and I've just got a bit of an idea of where this roundabout uh, may go, or the legs. Uh, obviously, there would probably be you know, property boundaries in here defining where that is. But just give me a bit of an idea, make sure it's long enough so that when I ha I'll have no problems getting the uh, component to at least start up. Um, as we uh, discuss, we'll, we'll look at the, uh, the, the do's and the don'ts. Uh, about what to do and uh, what sort of uh, problems you may come up against. So we go back to our, our uh, major intersection here and we'll place our component. So we'll look at our component, we'll go to our major intersection. We're looking at our, uh, our alignments, this is our approach point. Again, it's just a super string with a couple of levels on it. Uh, it's not our uh, final super alignment at this stage. So I picked the major and the minor and I'm going to put it onto a, a model. You've got total control over uh, what you do here. Um, you can even, um, in regards to the model name that all the um, uh, alignments go onto, you can also even put a chain in here, so it will actually create a chain that you can run, which is all the strings solved in the order that they uh, should be. So that's my, uh, um, my major intersection uh, placed. Um, so we'll just get rid of our uh, mock send line survey. Right, so um, in relation to this, uh, this is where some people get to a stage where they have a problem. Um, so they've placed it and nothing comes up. Um, so this is the reason for uh, these construction alignments. So if I, if you have your alignment string sitting here, for instance, and I go set, okay, I get nothing. I do get an output window message saying that uh, error at major approach I could not fit the diverging lane on the available length of the send line. It's pretty straightforward. Um, so uh, if I undo that and go set, I get my intersection back. So that's probably one of the major things that you'll do wrong, and that's hence the use of the construction super strings uh, just to get the all the component working. And then we can look at our, our the uh, geometry of our uh, actual uh, reference alignment strings later on. So once we go uh, edit definition. Um, this means it won't be linked to the library component anymore, so uh, it'll become a, a function inside 12D. Uh, just like anything else, any other function in 12D, uh, you'll be able to recalc and uh, edit it uh, any, at any stage. Right, so if we look at the, um, the uh, parameters and placements, as you can see by the number of alignment strings here, there are quite a lot of them, and a, quite a lot of variation, hence the, the beauty of the components. So look at the placement. So again, my approach and departure, it has highlighting views here. So when you pick the, the major road, it'll highlight on screen and the minor road. So it will then be able to show. So if you did pick the wrong ones, you can go back and re-pick them again. So under the placements, if I'm looking at my intersection here, there's a um, uh, the major approach. We've already talked about that, the 150 odd metres. We also can look at the major approach clearance at the intersection. So if I change that to 20, it will then adjust this clearance from there to the nose of the island at the intersection. So again, you've got a nice little um, start up there, which allows you to do those sorts of things. So I'll look at the, the major road. Um, it's when it talks about the approach and departure, it means the way the, the direction the alignment string was created. So this is the approach uh, area and this is the departure. So it talks about the, the approach left-hand curve, it means this one. When it talks about the departure left-hand curve, it means this one. So you're approaching, you're driving from the departure, but it's on this side. So you just got to remember which way you, you create your alignment strings, approach and departure. The carriageway, again, you can either do the automatic method or the manual. Um, and again, you've got the number of um, uh, lanes here, so I can just adjust the number of lanes. Using these little spinner things here, they're quite good for just uh, visually doing it and obviously demoing it. Um, uh, lane widths, width, you've got um, uh, medians, so I can adjust my median. I can I, I just uh, uh, overwrite on this, I don't have to use the spinners for everything because they only increment it every half metre, so I can overwrite that and put a, an odd, odd dimension in. Um, so you've got the, the option to be able to do a bike lane, so if I put in a, 
1.5 metre bike lane, it will adjust the, the island to, to be hard up against the bike lane. So if I'm looking at the, uh, the uh, a little bit more in-depth um, uh, of the parameters, look at the approach, and I'll look at the left turn. So you see that it highlights the, uh, the whole left-hand turn. This left-hand turn incorporates a high entry angle. Uh, you do have choices, stand up, free, or high entry. And um, here's that naming convention again, that, uh, that county number uh, that I referred to in the help. The um, left-hand curb return is probably the main one that you're after and also the island here. So you're going to be able to use this for your uh, MTF design. Um, so it is nice sometimes to have this finish uh, where it uh, starts and ends. So when you do your MTF file, you can just snap onto the end of the string to start doing your, uh, your template design. Um, but there are options here to say, yes, I want to add that on and no, I want to take it off. Um, so it's pretty handy to see what might happen, especially if this is a bit more of a curved road rather than straight. Um, if I look at the, the parameters here, and I zoom in at my intersection. So for the high entry angle, uh, we've got a, uh, a radius 40, uh, radius 15. We've got a width one and a width two. I'm not too sure what they mean. Um, so if I basically pick on the width one, uh, there's a click here for more information. And I'll bring up a picture uh, and give you an idea of what you're going to change. So curb radius one, curb radius two. Here's the width number one, means this width from there to there. Width number two is the size of the, or, or defines the size of the island. Um, so the more you make this, the bigger the island gets. For the island itself, you've got uh, offset one, offset two, R1, and so forth. So it's a good little picture just to show you what's going on. Um, so obviously if I go to the to width number one, that's going to change the width there for the uh, any breakdown vehicles or anything. And this will change the size of the island. So I can go back and forth. So doing quite a lot of geometry there for you. Uh, in the island here, again, this is just simply um, offsets and so forth for the uh, little nose island here. Um, on the diverging lane, and this is said normally the, the process again, I can't uh, emphasize enough uh, that when placing something like this, there's, uh, there's a, a default in this uh, uh, parallel lane line. Um, so, uh, but we can just uh, change that and adjust it back and forwards. Um, so that value would have to be calculated uh, by you for, for the, for the um, approach speed. Um, uh, to, to stop, uh, so it's measured from here to there. There's also a taper involved, and the taper has a couple of radii either side set to 25. Um, I can, for my uh, deceleration lane here, um, say I don't want it. Um, so we'll then just turn off the deceleration lane, you'll only have that. And if in that situation, you also can then say, I want a, uh, a dedicated turn lane. Um, so then shift over and make this lane a dedicated turn lane. Um, so here I, I go back to my carriageway and add an extra lane in uh, because this is all moved over. Um, so I can say no to that and I do want my uh, left hand turn lane. Um, so the, the, that gives you a bit of a, a breakdown on the left hand turn uh, for a median. Again, it's very similar. Um, it's got a deceleration length. Um, here it's got a parallel lane length as well and also a, a storage length for vehicles. Um, so you can obviously adjust all this and get a bit of an idea what's going on. Um, so I can look at the the layout for the nose of the island. So again, I can come in here and say I want two two curves like that, or I want a triple. So there's quite a lot of variety there for you. All right. So so um, just to be, be aware of um, of what you're trying to do. Uh, sometimes the things that you do may just not make sense. Um, so in this case here, I'm going to uh, decide I want to add in another lane for the right turn. So I add in the, the other lane, but all of a sudden it disappears. And I wonder what, what happened. The output window is telling me. It's saying that the, uh, on the um, major approach, the median width is smaller or equal to the right turn lane width. Uh, so in other words, it can't fit two lanes in. So very most times I go and set it back to the way it was just so I can see the, the problem. And then I might go up in here and I'll say, okay, I want, so this is all to do with the carriageway. So I go up to the carriageway here, and I might say, okay, I want that to be, you know, more likely, say, uh, nine metres. And I go back down to my um, lane here, add that in, and I've now got the two lanes. So I've got enough room to fit two lanes in. Um, you will occasionally get something like this happen, okay? Um, and all that basically means from that you can tell that this, this width here now, uh, that the length of the tape is not uh, long enough. 
Um, so again, it's pretty easy just to go in and just simply just say, okay, there must be something to do with that. Okay, now I've got a longer taper, and then uh, you can adjust the radio and so forth. Um, so again, quite easy to um, go through and um, uh, add in the extra things that you're after. Um, so with the, um, uh, the, the curb types, um, so if I go over to here and look at the curb type here, uh, besides the high entry, there's also a, a free turn, and it has the same sort of edits and parallel lane lengths and island options that the other high entry had. So you can adjust all that as well. Um, and if you don't like that, there's also a stand-up. So the stand-up is just basically um, a simple fillet. So if I um, drop down to the curb return type, <clears throat> and it just basically says, OK, I've got a fillet. So I can just basically increase that. I can also drop down to a two-centre curve. So the two-centre curve is um, uh, quite handy. It, uh, the, the main thing you've got to sort of uh, re remember with this one is this uh, tangent length. Um, so what that tangent length is, distance measured from here at the approach out to here. So it's that distance from there to there. So it just allows you more flexibility to, to you know, manipulate the, uh, the curve. Uh, but obviously it can't go, in this case, less than the, this 15 radius, otherwise it will it'll disappear on you. Um, so you've got those sorts of options uh, for the for the the curb placement. Um, so if you do go to the to the um, carriageway for the minor road, this is where you turn around and say, look, I don't really need uh, a median uh, for that, and um, also down to one lane on both sides there um, of the road, and also then might go and uh, look at the the left approach and say, um, I don't want a uh, curb return, and again for the uh, for the um, departure as well. So I don't want one there as well. So you did build it better to to utilise all this and create uh, 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 a simple intersection just with uh, line marking only. So um, if I look at my alignments now, so that's basically on uh, based on a nice intersection like that. But if I do add in my um, intersection alignment strings, and I'll take off the construction ones. So a good start. Um, so now I can re-pick, so I can pick my actual alignment strings. I've got some good vertical geometry on and everything else that may be the, the uh, process, and adjust that. So now it's got some, uh, taking account the curved geometry coming into the intersection rather than just the straight construction ones that I did. Um, obviously for intersections like this, not too often do you have a really tight radii in here, so again it's all uh, depends on what you're trying to feed into it. So, so it depends on some of these tapers may not suit tight geometries, but you'll have to be aware of that. Um, the component also allows uh, the selection of two alignment strings uh, for your design on both legs. Uh, so in that case, instead of having the, the one alignment string either down the centre of the road or on one side of the of the median, you can have you can select two, which is more of the the, the design that people uh, do nowadays. So if we go and pick the the other alignment string here, and I go set, then it will use those two alignment strings as the medium width. Um, you can still go and add in uh, different uh, uh, lengths here. You can add in two lanes if it fits, uh, depending on what the uh, offset for these two uh, uh, alignment strings are. And you can do that for um, uh, the approach and uh, the major and the minor. So if we go back to our, um, our roundabout now, so we're looking at the roundabout, and again, um, some construction strings, okay, so rather than trying to make it fit your alignment string, I said most times I get uh, messages from people saying, oh, I, I, I put the roundabout in and nothing came up, um, but it would have actually said something in your output window uh, about uh, approach distance or something, you cannot create a, 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 um, a lane line or something like that, so there would have been a reason for it. Um, so I go into here and I grab my roundabout, so I'm just going to grab a the uh, minor roundabout. And again, I'm going to pick my construction string. So I've got one there called major and that one called minor. Um, so for the uh, roundabout here, there's more, most times, even though it defaults to 150, a lot of times the roundabouts can, these smaller roundabouts can be um, a little bit smaller. Again, I can grab the a, uh, model 
forward and then place. Okay, so um, I've got a, an answer. Um, uh, you can see by the geometry of this roundabout, it's not the normal 90 degrees. Um, done that on purpose, um, so just to allow for the real world situations. Here's the, the angles are, are a little bit more acute. Um, so the geometry you've got for the roundabout, um, I said it may not necessarily suit these tight angles. Uh, so you've got to look at that. You've got to look at the orientation of your alignment strings and in, in relation to your final design. So if I uh, edit my definition here now, and again, it's going to be a function now. So it'll be available on your recalc panel edit function here and also your recalc. Right, so when I look at the, uh, the roundabout one, I normally expand all these out so I've got a good idea of where everything is. And again, um, what's the approach departure? There's a major road, it highlights, and there's a minor road. So for the roundabout, the approach part is the direction of your main alignment string your major ones. So this whole thing is called the approach, that's departure, this is approach, that's departure. So that's the idea, uh, all based on the uh, direction of your original alignment strings. Um, here's some of those um, names that defaulted uh, out of my library. Um, if we look at the uh, centre of the roundabout, the, the main sort of uh, placement parameters, um, we can look at the centre and we can start to uh, change the uh, radius. As I ch change the radius of the alignment string, it'll grow and, and get larger. And you may not have noticed, but a curb return suddenly popped in here on the left-hand side. Okay, so prior to that, that particular curb return type uh, just didn't suit the geometry that was it was trying to achieve. Uh, and I'll explain why in a, in a moment, but you will have situations like that. Um, so uh, as it's, you can imagine, some of these curves are up to three or four compound curves that we're trying to solve. So again, you can just adjust your alignment string uh, to suit whatever uh, area you've got. So that does the radius, this does the circulating width. So again, I can go back and forwards with the circulating width, uh, or I can just override whatever distance I want. There's also an extra thing here for an extra circulating offset to do with your curb returns. And we'll put an extra distance in there for you if you want. Um, so again, you'll notice that this one it has now come on. Um, but uh, this curb return is still missing, and I, it's, I'd say it will be to do with this acute angle here. So we'll look at the major road, and we'll look at the approach to start with. Um, so the approach for all the roads um, looks at a uh, entry. So this is the entry, and this is the exit. Um, so in that case there, I've got a, a carriageway width approach, just a single carriageway, um, so I can um, uh, increase those or I can decrease that. I've got the radius that it comes in at. So this is the entry radius, and this is the exit radius. So if I go down to the exit radius, and I put in there, say, 90, then that would, uh, would then shift over for me. The um, width here is the width of entry to the roundabout. Okay, there's also an exit width. They're defined as a uh, circle. Um, and the, the centre point is here where this radius intersects the circulating and that's the width of the entry to the roundabout or uh, the exit. Um, that's critical in relation to the curb returns. Uh, there's a reverse curve, we'll look at that later on. Uh, there's a, a curve deflection um, uh, set up based on um, uh, the uh, uh, os roads. So you're looking at a offset from the centre line, offset from the curb and a distance midway between there. Um, so again, that's just a uh, defined as the dashed line for the curve. What you're interested there is just as you uh, design your roundabout, you're interested in what this radius is uh, for the actual allowable deflection. Um, so you've you've looked at the approach and we'll look at that reverse curve later on. Uh, so we drop down to our curb. Um, so if you're looking at this as the, the uh, major approach curb, then that would be the major departure curve. So if you just look at them all, you can see that one's departure. Uh, that one there doesn't exist at the moment, and the other one on the other side. So it's always the uh, the departure uh, uh, curb coming into here. So we go back to our curb over here and discuss what, what they are and, and their uh, um, uh, shortcomings and uh, into what you actually are trying to uh, produce. So the one that's default at the moment is called um, uh, tangent, three tangents, locked arcs, three tangents. So what does all that mean? Um, so basically, it looks at the, the three tangents approach. So you've got a, this is the curve I'm talking about. This curve from there to there is the first three tangents. So it looks at trying to put a, create an arc 
that is tangential to your reference line at an offset, tangential to this width stream that defines the um, uh, entry width to your roundabout, and tangential to the circulating out, outer arc. Um, so that's what that arc there is. And it does the same at the, on, on the departure. It does the same, tries to do a, 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 a fillet or, or tangent arc between those three. What's in the middle is the locked arc. So in that case here, it's the circulating outside uh, radius. So it's a bit a little bit fragile in the, fra in the fact that as this gets bigger, you've got more chance of, of a, a proper solution. As this radius gets smaller and smaller, uh, uh, then it will probably not solve. So that, that's the idea of these different choices. Um, they all suit different geometries that you're going to try and uh, feed into it. So um, this one here is, a, uh, is similar, three tangents arc, three tangents. What that does, that just allows, does the same thing, tangent, 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 but it just gives you a, 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 an isolated radius here rather than um, the circulating radius. So it's, it frees itself from the uh, center arc. Um, so the arc three tangents is this one. You might get this sort of thing happening a few times. Uh, so basically what it is, it means that the geometry you've got is that's the best solution. Um, so it'll more than likely be the approach radius. So it talks about arc, three tangents arc. So in this case, the three tangents is there's an arc from here, tangent to that, tangent to there, and tangent to here. So that's the arc in there. The, the, uh, the, the three tangents. The arc options is just two fillets, one here and one there. So invariably what happens is the start one, you might find that it's probably a bit too big and it's tried to wrap around the other arc. So if I suddenly start to increase these and you know, there's no rhyme or reason for it, I don't know what the exact answer is straight away, but invariably that's what will happen with those arcs. You'll see it'll probably go right around and loop back on itself. So the arc's too big for that arc there. Um, so yeah, that gives you an idea of what you can do there. Um, these arc ones are fillets. They, uh, they only know about the start and this arc from there to there. Um, if that geometry still doesn't suit, um, there's a, a basic um, uh, fillet. So the fillet one's pretty easy and um, you can just basically go back and forth. It's more of a visual type uh, curve. Um, and as I said, it, uh, it depends on what you're trying to, trying to achieve. So the fillet only knows about the, the approach and departure an offset and doesn't know about these things in the middle. So as you're moving this back and forwards, it's more of a visual type thing. So it may be something you're stuck with, uh, that sort of geometry in relation to what you're trying to achieve. Um, there's a two center curve, we looked at those before, and a three center curve. Um, so these ones allow a few other options and being able to offset and, and change things around. Um, again, it's, a, it's a more of a visual thing. Uh, it knows about the, the uh, approach and departure, but not really about the center things. Um, so if I set that back to locked, I'll get a reasonable answer. So these are the ones that give you a fairly good answer. Um, the grading of the, uh, of the curb returns uh, is fairly simple. Um, it's just a uh, source cross fall, which is the approach, departure, it's minus 3%, and there's a, a cross fall at the roundabout. Um, so basically it's gonna go from here uh, the, the, on the uh, level created on the center, out of 3%. Um, so basically you're um, uh, looking at your uh, roundabout. So depending on um, uh, what is solving um, is what you get uh, vertically as well. Um, I did have some rough geometry on these, uh, on these strings here, but you can actually place components with uh, no levels at all and it will still do the horizontal for you. So if I go to my um, uh, my uh, minor road, and I'm now going to look at my um, uh, curb out there, and I'm going to select uh, fillet. So basically what it means is it, it, it didn't solve with the one I had, because um, the one I had was called a, a tangent in here. So there's a good chance by the time we do a tangent arc there, it's going to be spiraling off like this, and you won't be able to do, uh, uh, fit in an arc here uh, to, the, or to your main alignment. So again, it's a, bit, a little bit of trial and error like that. Um, so in the fillet, I can turn around and adjust this back and forwards and so forth. Um, right, so if I, if I set that back to possibly this one here, uh, which is the uh, arc three tangents, I sort of get a not a bad answer. Um, um, so again, uh, you can look at each one of those curves, all the different varieties just to try and fit the geometry for you. Um, so if I go back to my uh, placement, 
and I look at my uh, at my uh, major departure, which is this area over here, and I change that to uh, zero, and um, my remember disappears. So just like the other one, there will be an error down here saying that uh, there's an error at the minor approach. You cannot use an arc tangent arc when uh, the entry or exit strings uh, or uh, entry and exit don't exist. So again, it's always good to just put back what you had, um, so you can find out what the what the uh, remedy is. So I was talking about this here, the approach here. So there's you've got a, 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 a an arc there that has to be tangential or or use this leg here. Um, so this won't work. Um, so in that case, there, if you're going to turn off a leg, um, I'd prefer to go to a a fillet option. You can always come back and adjust these things later, and um, uh, so th that's a normal process on those sorts of ones. So again, over here, um, if we um, look at the, the the curb on this side, it probably also needs to be a fillet, um, and then we could sort of adjust this up um, to get a a geometry that fits pretty good. Um, so it, it's it's just knowing um, what effect that's going to have. Uh, so now when I go back to my placement and I change that to zero, and I go enter. I get a reasonable result, um, so a little bit easier to to uh, place the alignment string uh, with this leg here, uh, even though it's not going to be my final alignment string. Um, so I'm um, looking at my uh, the alignment now. It's got only got the the three legs. Uh, so if I drop down to my approach, and I can also look at the um, uh, the reverse curve now. So that's a slowing down of the radius. Of the of the entry into the roundabout uh, from um, the the Osros type environment, so uh, again it's a bit of a um, trial and error considering what your geometry may be. Um, obviously, I've done this a few times for the for the for the demonstration. Uh, but basically, what it does, it looks at a a radius here, which is a 300, looks at a 100 radius here, a distance from the roundabout, and an offset to give them a point for that radius to pass through, and then it just uh, uh, tries to um, uh, fill it uh, in with that curve there. Uh, so as you can see, it's, it's um, uh, with that number of compound curves around it, uh, something can go wrong. But at least you can, you can work your way through and uh, change uh, uh, curves to simple fillers just to get an answer and find out what the process is. Um, so, if, so for those um, uh, types of things, there's also a uh, an offset here uh, for the road. So what that does, it offsets uh, your drive line from the roundabout. Uh, there are some authorities that uh, re require that, and there's also an offset uh, from here. So again, I can offset the um, uh, the lane on the other side of the road, increase that, and I can end up with a a wider median uh, at the approach, even without this sort of uh, slowdown area. So it just gives you the flexibility. Uh, for that type of um, uh, roundabout, and as you see, it's, it's not a, a normal 90 degrees. It's, it's a reasonably complicated little one, uh, but then uh, allows you that flexibility. So we look at the um, the use of the components uh, as a basis for your design. Um, so in this one here, if we went uh, set on that, and we add in our uh, roundabouts. Our alignment strings, and we just get rid of our construction ones. So again, just like the other one, we now repick our proper alignment strings. So repick that one, and repick that, and go set. So um, all the work we've done with the construction ones um, uh, should allow a fairly smooth transition. Um, but just a little bit easier to start with the, with, with the construction ones, rather than worrying about uh, some of the more complicated um, um, curb returns. So we look at our um, our component in relation to uh, uh, something that's not all of us not necessarily uh, used for. So if I add in my freeway job here, you'll notice this is a uh, an overpass. Um, so what's available here is um, uh, a I'm using a component as the overpass, but not all the legs are really ever going to be used. So obviously for uh, this round bit, you've only got the entry; you never exit down here. And on the uh, on the uh, exit to the end of the freeway, you only ever take this leg. You don't use this one. Um, so the idea is I still use the component um, 
to create the roundabout, I just don't use those legs. Um, so the idea is you then uh, use the strings that you want uh, in your final design. So the, the component is, is the underlying um, uh, design and then you pick which ones you want. So in that case here, I'd, I'd have a, a string here which is uh, on my uh, uh, final design and it's just done a reference string a computator and it just references the one on the um, component on underneath. And the saying goes for uh, the other side, there's also one under here which is my drive line. So I reference the um, uh, elements or the alignment string from the component uh, to create my final design string. And on that I would put my own uh, vertical geometry if the, obviously the ones from the component uh, from the uh, component don't uh, suit. Um, so you also got ones like this where you're utilising the exit and this is all not going to be used but you want to be able to come back down here and, and tie in. Um, so that's where you're using this as a basis. So if I edit that alignment string and uh, look at the parts, I did say I was going to I wasn't going to edit a line string, but this is a, an actual design one on top of a component. So I've got the fixed arc, and it's just a, uh, a simple fillet in relation to that string there on my component, and that string there and gives me the radius. I'm looking at a segment, which just references the, um, the outer line from the component, and then finally I've just got a free arc going back onto the, uh, on the overpass. So it just shows that you can utilise the component um, for a lot more than just um, the... Uh, um, normal normal placements. So if we go back to our so on our freeway, it would look like that. So on our freeway design, we'd have things like this with that the component I talked about, plus also the entry and exit ramps. So the entry and exit ramps, if we look at that sort of thing, we we're looking at a um, uh, exit ramp single lane. And again, it just asks you for the strings you pick. These are just construction strings again, not necessarily my final alignments. Um, it looks at a uh, width of the road, uh, how far it is from the intersection and uh, so forth and I put it onto a, a model. So I've got my ramp. Um, so it has uh, edit options as well. So I look under here, it's got edit options uh, for the, the ramp itself, uh, the actual you know, angle rotation from the curve, um, uh, how far it is from the roundabout, um, the, um, the nose information in regards to this and also the diverging lane uh, length and so forth. So these ones here we sort of put in a, because uh, this radius here can either, can, normally would be about a 1250 radius, depends on what it's trying to, uh, to come off, or we just set it as a, as a, as a small radius, um, just so you can then adjust it and um, have a look at that. Uh, so it will then allow, so that geometry allows that sort of radius, where sometimes you might have one that doesn't quite suit. Um, so again, um, you have the same one. So under there, there's also options for a, uh, a lane, for a entry lane. So if I go, go entry, entry ramp single, and again, pick my center line and the exit. In this case here, it might only be 300 meters from the um, overpass, uh, lane width seven. And the approach is the, is the direction of this string here. So it's actually on the departure. And I go and put it onto a model and go place. And so I now end up with the same thing. So you can look at those ones later on. They have the same sorts of edits in relation to nose islands and these radii. And um, probably even these ones here, just be a little bit careful on the taper. Uh, it's a fairly long 100 meter taper, but it may not necessarily suit the type of curve here. So in that case, you would leave as it is utilise most of this alignment string here and then fit in your own just like I did with the roundabout. Um, so it's a horse of courses when it comes to those sorts of things. Um, so again, you look at the, at, the, at the one here, this is the thing I'm talking about here. So maybe you might end up uh, you know, referencing this part and just adding in the final bit to tidy that up. Uh, but the rest of it for that type of thing is quite, quite handy. So you can see the component is not only for the for that sort of placement, but uh, for the prelim, but also can make its way all, all the way through into the design. So we go back and look at our some of the ones that, uh, that do create a uh, possible headache sometimes. Is the um, placement of a, a CHR intersection. So again, I can pick my centre line and my side road. 
and I grab a model and place that. So the CHR intersection allows you to, it's a fairly basic thing, um, so it allows you to have a predefined uh, value so you can turn around and select the speed and it will adjust all this for you in relation to the speed. Um, so it, it, it works out all these lengths, uh, these tapers and those sorts of things. But generally what happens is um, uh, most people or have done is uh, put it onto a, a major line that's got a bit of a curve in it or something and then it's a, you know, whether or not it's, a, it's, it's, it's good design or not, um, it means that uh, when, they, when they come to place the major line string, they do that and they end up with a, a bit of a weird thing on, on that geometry. So I'd say nine times out of ten, even more, um, it will be a relationship to this approach taper. So you're looking at a, a, a linear taper trying to go around a large radius curve. So I guarantee you that will be the problem. So I can't really defend against that. Um, all you can basically do is just uh, look at the, the, the major road, understand that that could be the problem and look at the leading taper. Um, so in this case, if you make it a bit longer, um, you, know, you may get an answer. Um, but as you can see that in reality, this part here would probably be a large radius curve rather than a linear taper. Um, so sometimes things happen and um, you just have to be aware of what that's all, all about. So look at my subdivision design. We'll finally look at the, um, the uh, placement of, of the regular type uh, components. So in that case here we've got a quick place. And a quick place is, um, um, you know, really does have to suit on what you specify here, whether it's long enough, all those things that I went through before. It doesn't suit every component, and, um, but uh, it is good to use and uh, good for your demonstration here. So we'll set this, we're doing a subdivision job, so we'll set these to more like 50 metres. Um, so if I drop down to here, and I might drop down and say, okay, I want a, a small roundabout. This is the one that I talked about before, maybe for um, um, subdivision jobs. If you just hover over the um, uh, uh, intersection, it will create that for you. So you just go C for create. All right, so you get no choice on which is your minor and major and also and the model names and all of that. So the normal placement's a better way of going about it, um, but um, uh, it, this one is, will work for you. When you place up the top of that one like that, um, you'll see that you've got that, that legs missing. So even though it's a quick place, it's, you have to go and edit it and look at a few of those things that I looked at before. So you are sometimes better off starting off with the construction ones first uh, to make sure you get a, a, a valid uh, answer. Um, cul-de-sac. So I'll hover over there and I'll get a small cul-de-sac, uh, pretty straightforward. Um, I'll drop down to a uh, hammerhead. As you, as you hover over here, you just have to go C for create, but I do suggest you go place rather than use the quick place, um, but it's up to you. Uh, so it is, it is very uh, finicky in relation to what you specify here. Um, the one I talked about before is a, uh, a minor intersection. So the minor intersection, you hover over there and you just get the simple one like that. So you can then create that with C for create and then you can go and edit that and change those curb returns to whatever you wanted to. Um, so in that case here, we've got a, uh, one of the ones I talked about before, which was a major intersection short. And if I go and um, uh, hover over that, it'll create that for me. Um, so it just gives you the opportunity to, to get an intersection started without those big long length deceleration lanes as a startup. So even then with that 50 metres, it still gave you an answer for the, for the intersection. Um, so there are sort of quick drops. There's uh, things like um, bus bays. Again, they've got um, uh, bus bay. I can hover over here. It will produce a bus bay for me. Um, so all those ones are similar. They all have the edit commands and um, uh, so forth. So if we finish that and then so we just edit this one now. So that's similar to what I did before. Um, so we can quickly see which strings it did pick by just highlighting here. So it actually did pick the right ones, which is handy. Uh, edit definition. And we're now back into our roundabout as before. Um, so in our MTF file, uh, we'll use the start and end of these strings here for where we um, stop our templates and everything and create our design for our roundabout. Um, so it's very handy in relation to that. So back inside the, um, the, the final design, if I uh, take off my test intersection. Um, so I've got something along those lines. So I'll go to my uh, place component 
and I'll go to my uh, test one. So again, picking the the um, major and minor strings, and I'll go place. All right, so it's 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 created these strings for you. Um, so uh, and and you can see the, the 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 final process. So it's not very hard to to do. Um, and but once you do have that that the uh, the intersection going, that sort of thing, it doesn't take long to to create your your component. Um, and because these are have the basic geometry on them, um, you can then go up under under your um, uh, design and go to your apply and apply MTF Manager. You can then select those curve returns. Let's pick that one, that one, that one there. And again, this just goes through and does all the all the MTF files for you. Um, view for display. We're going to grab a, a seed file and um, uh, basically run through the whole lot there. So, so it will go through and then create your apply many functions um, for all, for the entire intersection for you, just like normal. Um, so, uh, in that case, there, if I get rid of this information. So we're looking at our, our intersection like that. So if we add in some of our uh, pavement design, we've done some pavements here. We've also got that allowed as well. So these are all working on the on the um, a snippet in your um, uh, seed file, and again uh, available to our our uh, pavement attributes up here, which we discussed in a previous uh, video. Um, so it gives you an idea, hopefully, of what the of what the components are like. And um, as I said, the the idea, the construction idea, I think is a better, a, a good way to approach it, until you're a little bit more accustomed to uh, the do's and don'ts of the uh, alignment string. Thank you very much. Thanks, Peter. I um, I think we've just got time for a couple of questions. Um, I will. Let's see. Arwen um, has asked. Does the major roundabout comply with ARNDT requirement as per, um, I think, Department of Transport and Main Roads? Well, the idea is that uh, with this is the is the actual flexibility. We'll we'll start with something, but it, uh, it's up to you to to come up with your your final geometry because it, it's it's so um, varied in relation to your the alignment of your alignment strings and so forth. Then you're you you do have the ability then to to uh, um, uh, then transfer that over to to programs like Art and uh, check that. So uh, we did make a bit of an effort in relation to those deflection angles, um, but um, uh, as I said, it's a uh, the component is such a variety of one. Uh, it, it is still up to the user to to verify that that's a uh, uh, up to those standards. Sure, absolutely. Um, Chris has asked. Can we get islands in the roundabout component? It'd be handy, wouldn't it? Um, so, so hopefully, if, uh, uh, after the after this presentation, we'll start to get an influx of people that are using these, and uh, then we can uh, move forward on some more development. Um, so, obviously, we, I, I like quite a few different things added to it uh, in relation to not only those islands, but the pavement options that I showed at the end and so forth. Uh, but yes, we it is definitely. Uh, on the on the on the development agenda, um, uh, so I'll, um, I'll follow it up from there. Sounds good. Uh, and we'll just do one more. Shake uh, has asked, how is the vertical geometry created for the components? Yeah, basically the vertical geometry on all all the components uh, looks at your you obviously have to have levels on your center line. Um, so it, it it will look at and as I said, I popped into the into the views here, and you could see. Uh, yeah, vertical geometry. So basically, what it does, it just looks at uh, a three percent cross fall for this one, and um, so it doesn't know about uh, and, and it does curb return functions around here, just the standard curb returns. So obviously, it's not the final product. A lot of uh, anybody that thinks that would be, uh, we uh, you know, uh, 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 a little bit disappointed uh, because. It doesn't know about the, these cross fall variations. Doesn't know about sag points and all sorts of stuff. But it is a good start, and uh, and 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 that's the process. So so be aware that uh, yeah, the final part. So when I do, when I do reference those strings uh, in the in the in the horizontal, like I did on that roundabout, 
uh, on here. Um, I would then have to put in my vertical geometry, which would uh, be a, a process outside the component. Okay, thanks. Um, oh, look, one more question has just come through. Jamie's just sneaked in, so <laughs> I'll read it to you now. Um, how does it work if alignments are four separate strings? No. Um, so, so they they have to be crossing over like that. Uh, just a major and a minor. They cannot be four separate strings. Um, so the only, um, yeah, that's basically it. So um, the only thing you'd have is when I showed you the subdivision, and you had the um, the one here with a little bit there. Um, that's still two strings. It does not work with four separate ones. I'm afraid. Sure, that makes sense. Thank you everyone for your questions and sorry to anyone we didn't get to live but we'll send through answers by email soon. The recording of this webinar will be available in coming days through our website and our YouTube channel. Our next two training webinars are using the apply function for non-road features on the 24th of May and setting up environment configurations on the 21st of June. So do keep an eye on our website for details of those, as well as our upcoming industry solutions topics. We'll also continue to keep you posted through email and social media. If you need to contact us in the meantime, our details are on the screen now. That concludes our presentation for today. Thank you everyone for attending and we hope to see you at future webinars.